Hi, my name is Darren from HEJ.tax, and today I'm talking to you from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. We've had an office here in Dubai since the end of 2022, and we have a number of clients here, and we have taken advantage of the, the opportunities, just like many other people of what Dubai in particular and the United Arab Emirates in general have to offer. It is a buzzing, booming jurisdiction right now. There's a lot of activity, there's a lot of action, even if you, you don't want to set up your business here, even if you don't see it from a business point of view, it's definitely worth having a visit to see the, just experience the energy. And you don't get it from just looking at stuff online. You really have to visit to experience it. It is something truly, truly unique, unique and special. But today, um, I want to talk about the challenge of banking in the Emirates and Dubai in particular, the Emirates, uh, in general. What are they, what, you know, what are the challenges and, and perhaps what are the recommendations for dealing with the, the challenges of, of banking in, in the Emirates? So, you know, it's, it's anecdotal, but if you have a look online, you would see that there have been, you know, some surveys and studies done. For example, KPMG. They did. Uh, they they partnered with a company called D Data EQ sometime uh, in the middle of 2022. I'm recording this at the end of 2022, so probably around June, July 2022. KPMG and this Data EQ company they did a survey. I think they looked at just under well about 172,000 retrieved public tweets from Twitter, which is a whole other conversation. Right? And they looked at it for an entire calendar year, so from Jan to December 2021. And they used it as, you know, as a basis for getting a sense for what uh, what user sentiment is, or what is the sentiment of people who've experienced interacting with the banking system? What do they have to say? What are they, what are they feeling about it? And, and unsurprisingly, it's been negative, which kind of served to substantiate what people already knew anecdotally. Everyone complains they've had a challenge, but it's not restricted to the Emirates. I think if you bank in any jurisdiction in the world right now, any serious jurisdiction, of course, I'm not talking about uh, some of the really, let's say, not very established banks in some far-flung islands and jurisdictions in the middle of somewhere else, right? We're talking about relatively established financial centers. You're gonna have a problem with banking. It's, it's so I'm not picking on, on the Emirates. I'm just saying it's a general problem and we're looking at how it's impacted on, on the Emirates in particular, right? So it's extremely difficult. If it is that you are, uh, if you have a B2C, so if you have a customer facing business and you need a corporate account and you need to be able to receive payments into your account using established platforms like Stripe and PayPal, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. You know, there's for whatever reason, I guess they've done their own risk assessment, and and to be fair, if you if you in any way familiar with the history of the Emirates, you know that it hasn't, it doesn't have a reputation historically. It hasn't had the reputation of being uh, a jurisdiction without controversy. I'm trying to be careful on how I choose my words, right? It's not a jurisdiction without controversy, and um, more recently it has been on the OECD blacklist. But of course, it made certain changes, including economic substance requirements and some changes around banking, banking got stricter as well, in order to move away from the the reputation that it's historically that has historically been thrown upon it. Whether it's deserved or undeserved, we can comment, and you can please feel free to debate in, in the comment boxes below. But it's been a thing, and. Certain intermediaries like PayPal, like Stripe, they are a bit gun shy and they don't want to necessarily deal with banks in the Emirates in general. Some maybe, but not all of them. And you know, the, the risk profile it's it's not something that they're comfortable with. So it is going to be a challenge. So probably when you're putting together your structure, you may want to look at customer facing banks, assuming that you are. Uh, focusing on clients in the US or perhaps in Europe, you may want to look at a structure that allows you to benefit from banks in those jurisdictions. Just, just something to consider as you speak to your advisor. So that's the first thing. Uh, the, the risk profile should, um, scares some of the, the, the transfer platforms or the payment platforms that scares them away. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that, again, based on the strength of the balance sheet, reserve requirements, you look at a search, you look at any ranking, you know, feel free to look at the various, uh, uh, financial listings, and you'd probably see that the banks in the Emirates are necessarily the strongest banks compared to banks in Europe or North America, Japan, or even in Singapore, another financial center. So the, the banks tend to, to rank below those, which, you know, of course, I'd encourage you to read the, you know, the fine print to, before you make any sort of informed choice. But 
it's just it just means that there are probably stronger banks elsewhere and and that's yeah i'll leave it there i don't i'm not disparaging i'm just saying that they list lower than banks in other jurisdictions that's all but of course if you have a another point of view feel free to comment below and let's get the argument going right so first point is the banks may not have a, a smooth and friendly interface with the main payment gateways the second point would be the relatively lower rankings compared to other financial centers and last but not definitely not least is opening a bank account is incredibly difficult. And again, I point out that this is on the bank. This is perhaps intentionally so because the Emirates has, as a financial center has been put under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of uh, pressure to reform certain aspects. And, and one, there's a discussion that perhaps that's where the 9% comes from. The recent imp imposition of a 9% corporate, the, the VATs, it's because of the economic substance rules that have came in a few years ago. This is because of pressure to conform to certain international standards, which we can discuss elsewhere. But one of the things is opening a bank account is super difficult. Uh, but of course, this applies to most jurisdictions with established banks. You have AML, anti-money laundering rules, KYC, know your customer rules. They have to know your business inside out to feel comfortable taking you on board. If there's any element of risk, it is uh, most banks have a policy. If you don't understand it, just walk away. Or if it's someone, if, if you engage in certain types of activity, which is considered to be higher risk, including crypto, adult entertainment, gambling, sometimes they would prefer to take a pass on that. But generally speaking, opening an account is super difficult. It's going to take at least, let's say, one, two, maybe even three months. If it is that you, this is for an established business, perhaps a business, uh, you're opening a subsidiary in the Emirates and it's already established elsewhere, you, or you uh, re-domiciling from another jurisdiction to the Emirates, it's going to take a while. And that, it takes a while when you have an established business model and you can show bank records from another recognized bank. It's going to take a while. If it is you have a startup, you are into some you you probably need to prepare yourself for some pain and i was just doing some googling and arabian business there was an article in arabian business from january 2022 and they told you know, I, I guess you know it wasn't a, a scientific scientific survey like the one kpmg tried to do but it was you know they did you know they, there was a lot of anecdotal evidence where people were saying that to wait up to a year if they didn't get rejected many of them did get rejected a number of times but otherwise it could take up to a year to open an account for a startup because there is no history there's no basis upon which they can make a decision so be prepared for that but again it's not yeah i'm not picking on the emirates it's a characteristic it's a feature of many jurisdictions so where does this leave you again you know when you when you're trying to set up a business when you are trusting advisors to to help you set the foundation for what could be the rest of your commercial career business financial life you want to be careful in, in making that choice i've seen some influences condone or uh suggest what may be interpreted as banking fraud by preparing fake invoices and stuff like that i i wouldn't recommend any sort of fraudulent activity these things have a way of biting you in the you know what later on so Avoid anything that's fraudulent. Avoid anything that's a little bit, you know, suspicious. What you want to do if it is you have an established business, that's fantastic. You know, bring to, bring all the documents that you would need from the business that you was perhaps operating somewhere else and you're redomiciling, or perhaps you're creating a, a subsidiary in the Emirates. Get all your paperwork, work with your advisors, work with the account manager at your chosen bank and give them any, everything you want. Make sure it's, you know, certified or whatever they need, right? Just give them what they want and it should work in your favor because you have a track record. If it is your startup, be prepared for, you know, I, I guess a deeper dive in, into your business model. You want to perhaps present them with a business plan. You want to, you know, some sort of projections and so on, and perhaps get a qualified local advisor to sit with you and walk you through the process of putting together the documents and presentation and perhaps representing you with, with the financial institution to feel any questions they may have. And I guess what you're trying to do, put yourself in the, in the, in the chair of the bank. They have gone through a lot of problems. You know, banks are fined regularly for, in, you know, for not understanding their customers and perhaps unwittingly facilitating money laundering or fraudulent transactions. And they don't want that. They, uh, the Emirate wants to move from that reputation of being a shady jurisdiction into being, you know, a top class jurisdiction, like, like some of the others, like Singapore or some of the European uh, cities, right? So in order for them to do that, they just want to be super careful, just trying to understand. They're not trying to be difficult, just understand what they're trying to accomplish and, and work with them. Get your documentation, get your story together. You, you, you're creating a narrative that explains that who you are, what your business is trying to achieve, and that everything is above board. My name is Darren Joseph from HEG.tax. Have a look at our website. We have over 2,000 articles, very 
free of charge, helping you demystify the world of offshore uh, offshore structuring, international tax, and on our YouTube channel and some of the other podcast platforms that we have, we have over a thousand videos or podcasts talking about all things international tax. See you next time. Bye bye. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.